we are reading The Year of Miss Agnes by Kirkpatrick Hill. When it was Christmas time, we had a tree in the school. Toby, Joe, and Plasker went out with Toby, Joe's little dog team to cut down a tree as soon as it got light, and they found a really good one. But it was too cold that day, 50 below zero, and all the needles just fell off all the way home. Too brittle. It was just a little skeleton they brought back that day. We had to laugh. The next day, Toby, Joe, and Plasker got another one, and they got it right near the school and carried it easily like to the school so it wouldn't fall apart. So that was okay. After we thought it out, we put popcorn strings on it and little chains made of green and red paper. That tree looked just beautiful. It was supposed to have candles on it, but Miss Agnes said the spruce was too dry. The needles just fallen off with a little sprinkling sound when you walked by. We might set it on fire if we put candles on it. Miss Agnes showed us some Christmas pictures from other countries, and those Christmas trees were just fat, different from our skinny little trees. Our skinny little tree branches couldn't even hold a candle, I didn't think. Miss Agnes taught us a whole bunch of Christmas songs, some we knew from the radio already, and we put on a play. Everyone came back at the trap line, came back from the trap line at Christmas before they went out beaver trapping, so all the kids got to be in the play. Some people went to Alakaket for Christmas so they could go to the church there, but the rest of the people came to hear us sing and put on our play. We did that one about the ghosts, where this old man is really selfish, but those ghosts come to tell him how bad he's been to everyone and how everyone doesn't like him. A Christmas carol, it's called, which is funny because it's not about singing. One of the ghosts, Plasker, had to have chains, so we put some marten traps together, and he let them just clank along. And one of the ghosts had to moan, and that was Toby Joe. He was just as scary when he did that. Kenny and Roger were ghosts, too. I wanted to be a ghost, but Miss Agnes said we didn't have enough girls to waste them being ghosts. So I had to be the nephew's wife. That wasn't as much fun as a ghost. Jimmy Sam was the nephew, and he had to wear this tall black hat that kept falling off. Charlie Boy was Tiny Tim, that little cripple boy, and he had to be carried on his dad's back. So that had to be little Pete, because he was the only one big enough to carry Charlie Boy. Marie was Mrs. Cratchit. And she had this kind of hat that was like a lace doily up on her head. And her hair was up. Marie had more fun than anyone. And she wasn't scared a bit. Selena and Bertha got to be the Cratchit children, saying all this stuff about the goose. Old Miss Toby came to watch. And my mother said the words in Indian for her so she could tell what we were saying. And boy, she really liked that play. In the Indian way, the worst thing you could do be is selfish. And everyone says, if you do that, it'll come back on you. So Miss Toby thought it was a good play that we did. We made a lot of cookies and things for after the play. And Miss Agnes had made a hot drink with apple juice and sugar and cinnamon to have it with the cookies that we made. Miss Agnes took pictures of everyone after the Christmas play. First, she took us all together. Then she took a picture of just about everyone alone. She had a camera with a bright light that flashed when she clicked the shutter. Everyone carried on pretending that that light made them blind and they couldn't see anything. When we were eating the cookies and drinking the apple drink, Grandpa told us a story about when the priest came to Alakaket when he was a little boy and wanted to take a picture of everyone. No one had ever seen a camera before. The camera had a really big bright flash, much bigger than the one on Miss Agnes's camera. It scared all the people so bad, everyone ran out of the church screaming. We really laughed about that. A while after everyone was back from beaver trapping, Miss Agnes showed us those pictures she took. She put a white sheet up on the wall over all our drawings and the timeline. It had to be dark in the room, so we blew out all the lamps. And then she put the little square pictures in a machine and they blew up real big, just like being in the picture, the pictures were so big. We stared and stared. We never saw any pictures of ourselves before. We didn't look like we thought. Toby Joe said, geez, I look just like my brother. That was funny because Toby Joe always called his brother ugly. Marie was happy to see herself up there. She looked beautiful, and you could tell she thought so, too. I didn't even know myself in the pictures, but there was this girl wearing my sweater, so it had to be me. My hair was very messy, just like Mama's always telling me. And my smile didn't look in the pictures the way it feels on my face. My smile looked like Baco's smile, like our daddy's smile. I never knew that before. Then Miss Agnes showed pictures of the places she'd been. The best ones were the pictures from, of Greece, where the Greek gods came from. There were all these old white stone places partly knocked down, temples and stuff. There was England, where she came from, and the town where those people used to sing in the big church. It was flat, no hills, and we laughed at the river. It was so little and lazy, just a creek, really. 
There were lots of guys rowing on this in a skinny boat, all bending forward at the same time. There were flowers on the trees. That's how it is in springtime, just about now, she said. We were surprised because it was still winter here, 40 degrees below zero at night sometimes, though it got warm fast in the day because the sun was staying out a long time now. To think there were flowers somewhere right now while we were still here in the snow. Those flowers smell wonderful, she said. We could see how she would miss a place like that that had pink flowers on the trees. I would like to see that. Chapter 14. Some of the kids could read pretty good. Toby Joe was the best of us younger ones because he would go to Old Man Ab Anderson's and read all the magazines and stuff. And Jimmy Sam could read as good as Miss Agnes, really. But Marie could hardly read at all, and none of us younger ones were any good at it. We were would read real slow, and the big words gave us fits. Selena and Charlie Boy were still learning the alphabet. Miss Agnes gave Jimmy and Toby Joe, Toby Joe regular books to read like Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. And they just had to practice to get faster, she said. For the rest of us, Miss Agnes did something different. We had these little books all the other teachers used with Dick, Jane, and Sally in them. They had a mother and a father, and that's what they called them, mother and father. We never heard of that before. And there was a kitten named Puff and a dog named Spot, a little brown and white dog low to the ground with floppy ears. They lived in a town with lots of trees along a cement road, and the houses were really big. All they did was play, those kids. The boy had short pants on, and the girl had yellow hair and a ribbon in the hair. I think those kids were flesh colored like the crayon. When you read those books, it was kind of embarrassing. Look, 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 see, spot, run. They talked kind of stupid like that. So Miss Agnes didn't want us to read those books, but Marie, she liked them. She liked to look at the pictures and Bertha and me did too. I liked to think about living in a place like that where everything was so clean and fancy and they had a bedroom all for themselves, those kids. I would like to have a mother like that too, always smiling and making something good to eat. Milk and cookies, she always gave them. Well, I don't like milk, but the cookies would be very nice. So Miss Agnes put those books away and she made some other little books for us to read. A different one for each one of us. Just little pieces of paper stapled together. But the thing about those books is they were about us. My book said this, there once was a little girl named Fred. Her real name was Frederica, and she lived on the Koyukuk River with her mother, Anna, and her sister, Baco. And there was more about me and Baco playing and stuff, and our grandma, and what we did for work, like doing dishes and bringing in the wood. It was so good, I read it over and over, and that's how I learned those words. Then every few days, Miss Agnes would write me another book with those words in them, and more, harder words. She wrote one for Marie about how she'd grow up and get married and have a whole bunch of kids, and she would cook and all that. Marie loved her book. When she read it, she'd get sort of pink in the cheeks, and you could see that Miss Agnes had written for her a life she wanted to have. Even if she had to take care of her mama's kids so much, she wanted some of her own. She was just like that. Pretty soon, we were reading each other's books, and then we'd tell Miss Agnes what to put in the book for everyone. She'd write down the things that we said. And that's how we got along in our reading. Miss Agnes would make these little books for us, and when we knew them by heart, she'd give us new ones. It was easier learning to read that way. Seemed like none of the words were ever too hard. Then she'd make us write stories because she said that writing was just reading backwards. And you learned how to write by reading just as well as by reading. Reading backwards. We thought that was pretty funny. Miss Agnes said not to worry about the spelling. Just write anything we wanted to, even if we could make up stuff. I did, it didn't have to be true. I really liked that. To make up pretend stories. She gave each of us a little notebook. Any word we needed for our story, she would write for us in that notebook. That was our own little dictionary, and that's the way we learned to spell. Baco would tell her story with signs to Miss Agnes, and she would write it on paper for her. And so we'd do that every day, and then would read our stories out loud for the rest of the kids. Some of them were pretty funny. Marie wrote one about getting her long hair caught in the ringer on the washing machine and how her head was already pulled up to the place where clothes is squeezed through before she got the washer shut off. Little Pete wrote about a time Mama Moose chased him up a tree when he went to fish camp because she thought he might hurt her baby. I like to write all the stuff Grandpa told me about the old days, and once I wrote about old man Anderson's life. He had a lot of interesting things happen to him. I asked him a lot of questions and put the answers in my story, and he was just proud of that. Best of all, I like to write about magical things, like the fairy stories, magic snowshoes that would take you anywhere, and pills you could take to learn everything without even studying it things like that. Writing stories was, was what I was good at. 
Miss Agnes said everyone is good at something. And when we asked her to tell us what we were good at, that's what she told me. Charlie Boy was good at sign language and Jimmy was good at science. Selena was good at drawing and Roger was good at airplanes. Kenny was good at music and Bertha was good at printing and cursive. Little Pete was good at making people feel happy and Marie was good at running the house and dancing. Plasker was good at geography, Toby Joe was good at reading, and Baco was good at sewing. When she got to me, she said, Fred notices everything about everyone, what they say and do and look like, and what they're feeling. So she's good at writing stories. We were all happy to hear what we were good at. I just couldn't wait to tell Grandpa what she said about me. I was so proud.